So the table's all cleaned off now. I put the printer mechanism back up here. We're going to slide the electronics in. I ended up putting a zip tie on there to hold that so it wouldn't flop around. I had that hole there because, again, like I said, the standoff broke, so it's not going to get used. Hi. Huh. Staple. Wonder what else is in there. All right. So first thing you do is take and hold it in the air and slide it inside. And since I added this thing here, I got to make sure it goes through my wire and my power switch. Keep sliding it and wiggling it back and forth. And sometimes you have to lift the front end where the power board is to get it in. You got to get it in there to clear everything and wiggle it around some more until you line it up on the screw holes. I'm sitting on something. Oh, I'm sitting on here. Let me see if I can show you because you may have this problem too. I'm sitting on this wire here. This one. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the wires to the printer motor on the side of this. So let me just hold this up to the side and see if I can go this way with it. Where it's not underneath the power board. Yeah, that's better. Line them up. Got the holes back here. Right there. Let's get my container full of nuts and bolts and screws and everything to hold this thing together. We'll start putting it back together here. All right, now which ones go where? <laughs> Looks like they basically use the same ones on everything. Again, that was different from the one I used, the one I worked on earlier. Had different screws for different holes. There we go, drop one in there. I'll shake it to get it out. I have a big old bucket full of atom screws and I need a magnetic screwdriver. That's what I need. I definitely need a magnetic screwdriver so that I can get these screws in without magnetic screwdriver or smaller fingers. I got club fingers. I do. Oh, seriously, Millie. All right. You can do this. Keep going. You got plenty of extras. Keep going. I'll get them out, obviously. Oh, come on, Millie. Three. Should I go to another hole? <laughs> this is killing me. Oh, come on, Millie. Really? You're killing me yourself. Now, here. All down there, screws. I got four of them. Four screws so far I dropped. I am bad when it comes to carrying the screws. <laughs> You're all probably like, get the tweezers, get the tweezers. Yeah, once you get one started, maybe I can get the rest of them in there easier. Just have to learn how to screw things in again. You know, get retrained. Yeah, look at that. See? Once you get one, you can get the rest there. Now, I'm going to have an extra screw left, remember, because that one standoff, as I said, was broken. Out screw. Yeah, that one standoff was broken, so I can't re hook that one up. Rotate this this way. That's the screw I can't do because of the standoff being broken. See how this come up there nicely? Come the other way. Let's see. Yeah, this right here has to go back under here. Go down. Go down there. Go down. Come on. There. There we go. Get that down there. So, that one I can't put in there because, like I said, Let's see, yeah, that's fine. That's going to go over there. I can actually probably put it right here. It's catching on the wires I just put in. Have them attached to that. That's what it's doing. Might be catching on that. We'll see. 
Nope. All right, so we take the cover. The cover's got to come over on this side here. And slide it up in here to protect little fingers from the electricity. Turn it so I can see where I'm going with a screw. Screw hole right there. You probably can see it. See the hole? That's where I gotta put another screw in. Good luck with that, Millie. You can do it. Uh, yeah, so I can. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you need to talk to book too soon there. There we go. Technically, that didn't have to go back in there if you're one of those ones that doesn't like to put everything back. Back here, we have that wire there, another screw. It's a ground for the motor for the roller. What is that, roller or plantain? I think it's called a plantain. I think it's, it might be both. Oh, you don't. Let's see, my head of my screwdriver is warped out or stripped out pretty good. I like this one too, but the handle is too small. So, but that doesn't seem like it's the right screw. Surprisingly, is there another screw that's smaller? Maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. Get in the hall get in the hall I'm probably cross-threading but you know what this only way bright light <laughs> blooper reel I'm probably cross-threading this but you know what this only is a ground so it really doesn't matter too much there we go I was cross-threading slightly it just holds it in place at least I didn't use hot glue all right, so back to the front now. Now it's reattached the electronics. Throw this over here. Now remember we added some, put some numbers on things so we know it was what. Come here, wires. Come here, wires. First off, yeah, this is very hard for to me sh to show you, but there's the power cable. I'm assuming that's power cable. It may not be power, maybe something else, but there's that. That goes there. And then we just have to find the ones I put numbers on them. Okay, number four goes here. Get out of the way, twist tie. My little thing I added is getting in the way slightly. Four. Then three. I believe it was four, three, two, one. Yeah. Three. Get in there. Three. Get in. Let's do my best to make sure you can't see what I'm doing. Three. Hey. Where did you come from? Dad, oh, you were next to three, but where was you? Hmm, hold on a sec, I gotta look at another printer. All right, I just went and took a quick look at another printer. This one right here on another printer is part of that connector there. And this one, it's a separate connector by itself, but it does go right here, green, green goes in this one here. Leave it to Coleco to make changes. Maybe one week it was cheaper to buy two small connectors than it was to have one big one, who knows. It really isn't that hard to put back together. It's just a little harder because I'm doing it at a weird angle here. Instead of just actually doing it. Doing it with the camera in my way. So it makes it look like it's harder than it is. But it's not really that hard to put this thing together. All right. And number one. Okay, so there we go. All hooked back up. Everything's hooked up. My little switchy thing is right here. Hmm. It is tapping it. Man, can I move this? What's way where I will move my switch? What if I put my switch back here? 
<laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have used the zip tie right there. <laughs> See, when I roll this here, I mean, it's, it's not hurting it. It's not snagging or nothing. I guess it's okay. So what we got here is right, they're all off right now. So let's turn them on. It's the two outside ones are the only ones that matter. So we know that it's on when we put it back together. Let's get the cover. Put the cover back on. I still have the screws on the bottom I gotta put on. Put that there. That helps, again, to protect these because they do snap and then you can try to crazy glue them back into place, but crazy glue doesn't always hold and... Yeah. These go right here. And two screws on each one. I'm glad that the power supply lines up inside when you bolt it down that it's not required I banged my camera there it's not required that you like line these screws up with the bottom because that would be a pain in the neck to do ah you're the one that goes in the back well you're the extra one now that one screw I couldn't get to go in very well well that's there it is for the ground wire. What you can do when you take things apart is separate them out, compartmentalize everything, so you can remember what screw goes where. I usually do that. I don't know why I didn't do it this time. All right, let's put our seven screws in. Remember, back here, one of them doesn't hold a screw. And for the life of me, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's the left side or the right side. So what I'll do is, since I have an extra screw, is I'll put one in each side, I believe. And that way, whichever one doesn't take it, it's just extra. It'll fall out when I flip it over. So let's put that on there. the cover back into place get in the hole thank you sometimes you got to encourage them to do what they want to do you know you want to go in there there's like Bill Murray on Caddyshack get in the hole or actually was it Bill Murray actually you know what I just realized Adam Sandler may have been copying Bill Murray oh this fell off I'll put that back on okay Battery died on the camera. So I had to swap batteries. That's why I got extras. That's nice. I wish I could plug this camera in and just have it run off a wall wart or a USB plug, but it doesn't have a plug on this one. My other one, my shaky cam does. But when you plug it in the charge, you can't use it as a camera. So that's useless. And this one right here, that's the one that doesn't do anything. So it'll fall out as soon as I flip it over. And then the little doodads. You know, all the time I've used a Coleco and all the love I have for the Coleco. I have no clue what the hell those things do. So we're all plugged in. My little adapter down here to turn them on and off is on, is in. Is it going to catch? I have a feeling it might catch. Maybe I need to... Can I... I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should have... What's that do? Well, that's better. Okay. Right there is good. So, now we're going to shut this off. I'm going to switch over to the main camera, put this on set, and we'll give it a test and see what she does. I mentioned a few times that I had been working on another system earlier. This is the power supply and the printer control board from the printer I was working on. 
And I want to show you why you would want to have the switch to turn the printer on and off instead of just yanking the cables out. This is where the cables plug in. Right here. And notice this. Can you see? I'm pretty sure you can see it. But look how it's just flopping around loose. The only thing holding this thing on here was the solder and the trace. Nothing else. These two, you can see them. Maybe you can't see, but I can see. There is the solder has come up from the traces on this. But obviously you can see it on that one there. Let me let me see if I can I zoom in here. I can zoom in, but it's not focusing on it for some reason. Try the old hand behind it focus. That ain't working either. All right, so zooming in didn't work. But you can see that. I mean, obviously, it shouldn't move. Yeah, so I'm going to have to repair this. But this is why you don't want to be yanking cables in and out. Okay. We brought it back over here, hooked it back up to the system here. Now I'm going to turn it on and I've got them in the on position so it should act normal. It'll reset itself. Here we go and type away. If I hit reset, it does this little reset thingy. Now we'll bring on the shaky cam. Turn that on. While shaky cam's turning on, let's Open this up here. Turn on shaky cam. I'm going to switch these off. I don't know what would happen if I switched them on and off when it is on when the power is on. So I'm just making sure the power is off. Move it out of the way. Cover back on. Actually, I can just leave the cover off just so you can see it. Let's move this over here. I want to show you that when turned on, it resets itself. But, ain't no typing. And, no reset. But she still works. Turn it off, flip the switch, she's back on. Yes. That may seem like a little extra work to go about doing it, but I still have a totally working printer here. I just modified it slightly. I could rip those cables. I said rip, but remove those cables and plug them back in if I didn't want the printer or did want the printer. But I learned in an earlier one. I keep mentioning this earlier one, and you'll see what this earlier one is later on in a future video. But I discovered in an earlier one when I was working today that the little pins that hold those cables that little, that, that little edge connector, well, it's not even edge connector, but just pins. They are soldered very badly. And there's actually a whole bunch of the Coleco hot glue holding it in place. So I'm assuming that eventually plug it in and out and make it come loose. Because I discovered with that one that they wiggled loose. And I have to go back through and re-solder them all together. And I'm not sure if it's going to hold with the solder. Because as you noticed when I was working on it, it's not a true circuit board with traces and stuff that it may be soldered to. So we'll see. Anyways, it's how to make the printer more useful. It's not in the way at all. I'm in typewriter mode right now. Now I'm not in typewriter mode. Now I am. So, have a good day.